Association. Um, what we're going to do today, we're going to do some shaving and some facial hair. Um, first things first, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the PBA for putting this event on. You know, without them it wouldn't, sit, wouldn't happen. I know there is some reserve seats at the front, but come forward and use the seats. If they're not here now, they, they've missed them already. Um, we've got a couple of models for you today, great models. Um, we've got Dwayne. Who, who does a lot of shaving in the, in the barbershop in the salon? So we're all shavers, great. Do you think it's popular at the moment in the state? Is it something we do yeah. a lot of? Yeah? Cool. So we, yeah. Our trends are tending to, to change a little bit in the UK. We, in the, in the 80s, when we were in the 70s and 80s, it went all very unisex. Uh, we started to lose some of the uh, skills that the traditional barber had. So what, what we tried to do with our company, we've got six locations, 45 staff, and we stayed very traditional, so we, our skills were kept when, when everything kind of got watered down and you know, we went very, very weak in, in barbering skills, we stayed very strong, we, we stayed very separate. Uh, and because of that, we kept our, our shaving skills, which was you know, great for our business, but you know, education-wise as well, it's really kept us at the, the forefront. So with, with the British Barber Association, you can see we've got some products on, on, on the front here, and you, by all means, come up and have a look. If you can't see, just come up. You can stand very close, very intimate class today. I want you to get as much out of it as you possibly can. All I ask of you is, I know we all shave, so we just, we just determine that. Just give me, open your mind, and let me just to, hopefully, you know, you can either pick a few things up that you didn't know, might enforce the things you're doing, you know, and you think, yeah, I'm doing it right, or that's the way I do it, it's great. But all we need is just an open mind to just get in there and, and take some information on, okay? So we got our, our model today, Dwayne. He's uh, been kindly to come into it for us. I won't say that we're paying him, but if we are, <laughs> it isn't a favour. Uh, so we're going to shave, Dwayne. When we do a shave, as you can see, I'm already set up. It's all about the preparation. Prep of the face, prep of your tools, and the shaving part is only like four or five minutes, isn't it? You know, you know the score yourselves. I'm not going to tell you this is the only way or the right way. I'm just telling you this is what works. I've been shaving for 35 years now, and I know for our staff, they shave every day like this. So this is what we're going to do. As you can see, we've got a, a, a machine on here. This is the Spa Mist by Takara Belmont. We're using their chair as well. So having good tools makes all the difference. Uh, you know, if you're good at what you do, you can pick anything up, can't you? But I think it makes, it's all about the detail when we're shaving. Because when we shave, it's almost a little bit of theatre when we actually do it for the client. Because, let's face it, he can be at home and shave yourself for a dollar, can't he? You know? Safety razor for a cheap product. You know, this is about the experience. We charge you. What do you, what do you usually charge for shaving in your areas? 65. Is that about average here around here? Ours is 55. 55, yeah. So it's $55, 65 dollars. You know, it's, it's a lot of money some people, isn't it? When they can shave themselves at home. So what we've got to make sure is, is it is, you know, an experience and we get a great result and it's comfortable. And the main thing is about when we're dealing with clients is, is client comfort, isn't it? Because if, they, if they're in a stress position and, you know, we, we try and do the shave, which is average is about 25, 35 minutes. It's a long time to be sat in an uncomfortable position, isn't it? Yeah, you agree? So when we first start off, we've got all our tools ready. As you can see, I use a steamer um, to steam my towels. We, you can use hot towel caddies. I use disposable towels, so they look great all the time. These are easy dry, fantastic towels. These are a thermal towel. As you can see, the shape of them, the size of them, they, they've got like a waffle kind of uh, makeup. They're very strong, they don't rip, and they are perfect for shaving. And these are, these are actually for shaving, they're made for shaving. They're not just a white disposable towel. Then we've got our black towels for client protection, for shampooing or whatever. I like them white when, when I shave because they look pristine all the time. You can use terry towels, we used to use them for a long time. But when you use terrace towels, what tends to happen when you use, when you use towels, you know, washable towels? They stain, don't they? You know, they don't look pristine every time. And when we're shaving, especially when we're doing something so intimate as this, 
you've got to make sure that everything looks and feels great. Because if you, if you, if you get, turn up with grubby tools, and this goes with barbering anyway, but if you turn up with grubby tools, grubby towels, that reflects on you really, doesn't it? Okay, you're living on your reputation. I know a lot of clients are very, very loyal, but you're only as good as your last haircut or your last shave on, okay? So when, we, when we're getting this ready, and our apprentices or our assistants that you call them will get all this ready for me. So I've got a mug for uh, actually putting my hot water in, soaking my brush. I, I use two bowls, one for product, one for hot water. We keep the product hot all the time. No point prepping the face and then putting cold product on there, is there? You know, cold shaving cream. So we use a, a water bath there. I've got my sponge for sponge shaving. I don't know if anybody uses a sponge for shaving, but we'll go on to that in a minute. Um, brushes. So badger, synthetic, what you tend to use. Are you allowed to use brushes in this state? Yeah? No? It's the same knowledge area that you have only use it once or try and keep it on again. Okay. So we'll, I teach all over the world, so you know when I go to the Middle East, we have to be very aware of we're not going to, you know, put a, a ball bristle around somebody's face. You know that doesn't go down too well with if you're a you know have a religion, Muslims or, or whatever. You know, want a pig rub, rub around your face, do you? So we use badger bristle, bristle brushes uh, mainly in the UK, but the, the synthetic ones are making a real big come. You know, they they they're coming into the market now because of all of the, the problems we're coming across. They're great quality now, so, and the, the way you can get away with it, is, if you're in certain states, is just gift the, the brush at the end of the service. You know, give the, build it into your price, and if you can't you reuse it, because of state laws, just gift the brush to the client, and that way you can, you can get around the actual laws, okay? Really, really important to keep your tools in pristine condition. These will go, you know, mildew, you like kind of musty if you leave. If you, if you use this wet, put it in a drawer, in a bag and leave it, it will ruin the brush. It needs to be naturally dried. Usually we have a stand and they upside down and we don't, we don't actually soak these in water all the time because when they're knotted into the base, the better brushes, it will actually, the, the, the knots will come out and it, you, you'll see hair coming out of these all the time, okay? This is about, um, about $50, I should say, this brush. This is about $30. The one I use all the time is about £100, so that's what's that, about $130, something like that. I use Kent brushes all the time, beautiful brushes. So there's your tools. Going on to the real business end of things, I use a feather system. Now, I'm not sure what razors you use. Um, we've got all different types, so, you can use the, I'll show you these. It's different styles, and I'm not sure which ones you guys use, but as you can see, these, this is the feather system. All the same kind of razor. These two um, are my favorite, if you like. This is your everyday razor, okay? Um, this is Vanessa here. What stand are we on, Vanessa? 515. 515 downstairs, you can find all these products. Um, the main thing, and I'll pass you these round, the main thing with the razor is, is investing in as good as you can actually go. What kind of razor do you all use at the moment? Feather. Feather? Feather? Well, that's good for us, isn't it? Yes, that's brilliant. Um, you can buy cheaper systems. The main thing is with feather razors, and as you can see, we've got a number, and if you want any information, we. We stock all different types of blades. There's five different types of blades with this system. But when the main thing with this system is great for students and people who aren't doing, doing a lot of shaving to start off with, we don't actually have to touch the blade. So it comes from a cartridge system. We squeeze spring loaded. You locate it. Put the blade through. It seats, so it sits nice and smooth. That's just just touch it so it sits perfectly and you know it's actually sat there but you see how much of the blade you see okay it goes right to the end of the razor as well you get a lot of razors when we actually use a razor they've got a big lump on the end 
and it's really, really hard to get into these little areas. It's all about the detail, isn't it? Okay. So when you've got a flat-ended razor, you can get right in, right into the nose area, into the corners of the mouth, if you've got any dimples, you can really work around the ears, and that's because it's so flat at the end. Okay. When we're working with the razor, the different types, and obviously when we work with razors, we always pass the razor tang first. So it's always tang, so it's safety all the time, okay? Always closed. The traditional type of razor, obviously with the handle, we got the tang, the toe, and the heel. This was because it was easy to carry, it was safe to carry years ago. When, it, when they were hollow ground, we still use a traditional type. We still have this traditional setup where it goes through and that's how we hold it. Really, this is redundant now, isn't it? Because we use disposable blades all the time, so there's ne there should never be a blade in there other than when we're shaving. But I, I'm just, you know, a traditionalist. I, I, I really like things from the past and how it used to be, and this is what I was brought up with for the last 35 years. So I still use the traditional type of razor. Okay. Now we've also got the knife type, so this is exactly the same system, exactly the same blades, but you hold it more like a knife. We haven't got the handle anymore. Okay. Does anybody use this type of razor? Yeah, we tend to find that this suits the ladies better. You know, all, all the lady barbers tend to like this kind of razor because they haven't got the handle sticking out of it anywhere. And a lot of people, when they're working, and this has got no blade in obviously, when they're working, they haven't got this sticking out all the time. So when we're working forehand or backhand or reverse backhand, you know, it's easy to work with. Some people tend to find that this almost gets in the way a little bit because it's a bit more awkward. But because I've always been um, brought up and did all my training with this, I just find this is second nature. You know, so you've got to just have a look and try different systems just to see what suits you best. Okay. So there's our tools, and please, please come up and have a look at them at the end if you want to. I'll pass them around. You can have, have a, a really good uh, look at them. When we do the shave, or prior to the shave, what do we do first? What's the very first thing we do? Consultation. consultation. When we do the consultation, does anybody wear gloves when they shave? No? Okay, for the last 20 years, I've, I've been, my main, my main job is, like I said at the beginning, is teaching other teachers. But my, my main job as well, which is, takes up about, um, I don't know, 10 days a month of my my working life, if you like. I write all the qualifications and all the national standards for government in the UK as well. So I work in Westminster, I work in um, the Houses of Parliament, I work for the Department of Education, and for the last 20 years we've had to wear gloves. So whenever we do a shave, we have to wear gloves. Now everybody, these aren't my normal, but I bought these with me this, this, this time because these are vinyl. Sometimes people are allergic to latex, so we have different types of gloves as well. I'm sure that happens in the US as well. Usually, um, a size too small, so they're very tight, so they, skip, they fit like a glove. My, pardon the pun. Um, but if health professionals can use gloves to do operations, I'm sure we can do a shave. Everybody always says to me, oh, I can't feel what I'm doing, a load of rubbish. You know, you can you feel everything with gloves on. It's just getting used to it, okay? So before we even touch the face, we have gloves on. So can I just take your off point? Sorry. He's going to be a model later as well, so he's having a haircut later as well. So when we first look at the client, we look for contraindications. Contraindications are something that would stop us from doing the shave. What, what would stop us from doing the shave? Sorry? Open wounds. Open wounds, yeah. Very, very sun damaged. Yeah, so if they've got really bad uh, sunburn, infections, anything that's infected, we wouldn't do. So scabies, ringworm, hepatitis, you know, all these things that we would, we ask the clients as well. I mean, when we, when we first uh, started wearing gloves 20 years ago, it was about all about HIV, AIDS, you know, when we, we had the, the intended epidemic, if you like, or pandemic. Didn't actually come off it in the UK. But there's all different things that we actually, that can affect us. So, you know, hepatitis C, herpes, cold sores, 
they are just as bad for us as professionals. You can't see them, they live outside the body, they live in water, they live on surfaces. You know, so, so you don't know your client, I don't know my client, I've never met Dwayne before. You know, it isn't about being clean, it's about protecting yourself and your client, okay? It's all about better standards, if you like, or good practice. So when we're actually touching the face, we're checking for contraindications. Obviously, I've done a consultation before Dwayne got on stage. We've had a look at him. Limiting factors are a different thing. What, are, what would limit the service we do? When we do a service, what would limit? What would, what would, why would we change our method? Or what would we change if there was limiting factors? What would affect us? Moles or skin tags. Yeah, so facial features. So moles, skin tags, any unusual facial, facial features, bone structure hair length, density, all these things are going in our, are going through our minds, aren't they, all the time. So when we're doing a consultation, we really, really, really need to make sure we we'll, because especially if somebody's got a, a large beard, you know, if we've got somebody like Sebastian here on the front row, he came and he wanted to shave, I don't know what's hiding underneath there, do I? You know what I mean? So you need to really make sure you have a really good look. If it means combing the hair out of the way, having a really good look, making sure he's got no skin tags, like you said, moles, might have, uh, if he's having a, a clean up or a beard trim, he might not have the hair to have a particular, we've got to manage the, the client's expectations, haven't we, all the time. So it isn't just about getting in there and shaving it off, because especially when you're doing it on stage or something like that, or you're doing it, you know, as a lot of you probably are here, you know, you want to cascade this down to your staff. When we're doing, the worst thing is we can cut the client, isn't it, or irritate it. And sometimes, we're looking or, you know, for, we can shave the client too close. Because if we're going to irritate the client by shaving, it's going to be a poor service, isn't it? I've had shaves, I try and have a shave wherever I go in the world, you know, if I'm in LA or wherever. And I've had some terrible shaves and, you know, I wear a collar a lot of the time for my working life. I never, you know, I can't even put a collar on because it's made me so sore. Now that's no good for the client, is it either? So it's about not, you know, managing and what the skin condition's like as well. Does he go to the gym? You know, is he hydrated? Is he dehydrated? Is he a smoker? Does he eat healthily? All these things um, we're checking for. We can ask the questions, we can check the skin, but what we're after is, is determining what the skin can take and what it can't take as well, okay? We have a range of, of products that we can use. So, when we start off, We've done our consultation. We're going to get the client ready. My towels are all ready in. Um, quick one about, about the towels. When you, if you do ever use these towels, they come factory packed in, in bales of 60 like that. Okay. So when you get them, what we need to do is open them up and loosely refold them. Because with easy dry, they come straight from the package. They don't hold the water. How do you usually heat your towels up? Do you do them in a microwave or a caddy or just hot water? Hot towel, towel caddy. The caddies are great if you know you're doing so many shaves per day, aren't we? They're not great for first thing in the morning unless somebody gets there an hour before we need to start. So the steamers are great for doing small batches or microwave. The main thing is, is getting them into the right temperature, obviously. You can see it's steaming, okay? It's hot. But look how much water's in, in this actual towel. Okay, if you put too little water in, when we load the towel, we need the water in it to heat up because the towel will not heat on its own. If you put a dry towel in, we're not going to get a hot towel, are we? So it's a, the amount of water that's critical in the towel itself. So when we load the towel, we don't want it dripping, but we don't want it too dry. And that's a critical thing with your towels when you load them. So when we're working with these, and they'll cool down quite quickly, but they're great because they're disposable, they can go straight in the bin, next client, and they look great all the time, okay? Protecting the client first. And like I say, it's all about the preparation. So we're preparing the client, and we're preparing the face. The actual shaving part is the quick and easier part, if you like. It, that's the skill involved, and that's what we get judged on. But it's all this prep time, 
that actually makes the difference. We're not actually putting the towels around the back. We don't need to protect the back of the neck. We're not cutting hair. We do two towels, come across the chest, double over on the front because this is where we're protecting the client. If we put one towel around and just pulled it around like that, Terry's towel, what would happen? To cover all the neck area here, wouldn't it? It's to gather up here. So that's why we use two towels or use a one large towel and then fold it up so it comes around the neck. Okay? <coughs> client position. When we're working with the client, just take the, the strain off the chair, sir. What we try and do is we never just let the client drop back, do we? We make sure that the client is taking the stress off the chair and then we, we bring it forward. It's different on every chair. So if you just like to come back, Greg. So what we're after when we're actually shaving is can you see how the chair is, the neck rest is right in the nape of the neck? Okay? We don't want him on a stress position like that. This is, this is not good, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's, can you see how it changed the, the, the position of the neck area? We've got na natural tension already by having it not too low down. Just take it down again, mate. Just lean up with just a second, that's it. So when we, when we do it, we bring it down, it gives us that natural tension straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's the natural position straight away. When we're working with the client, always, always checking if he's comfortable. If you get, we're not going to be talking to him, are we? We wouldn't be taking, we wouldn't be talking to him through the service because what's happening is we're going to end up cutting him. So if we we work out, just tap the chair or you know, in between the strokes, if he needs to move, I'll keep checking with his comfort levels all the time. Okay. Again, like I said, we're going to use the mister. The difference with this than a steamer is it ionizes the water. So when we're working with this, you know when a steamer gets really hot if it's right close to the, to the client, it boils the water, doesn't it? When we use a, a, a mister, it actually comes out and we can put it really close to the client's face and it won't wet them either. It doesn't give any moisture. So when we're working, it just takes, if it's preheating, it takes two seconds distilled water and with this with this particular unit what you can do is you can you do uh, scalp massages uh, conditioning treatments you can process perms colors so it's a multi-function unit if you're in a, in a salon or a shop that uses all those services as well but it's really it wasn't designed or intended for shaving but we've we've been using it now for the last couple of years in around North America and it, so many people are using it to shave it now it's unbelievable so if you need any information on this as well, to call about one, they've kindly loaned it for us today. So we're all ready, set to go. We've got hot water here. So I'll already, Mona and our, our beautiful assistant, she's already sourced my water for me. So we're putting water in the bowl to heat the product up. And we're putting water in the, my, my jug just to warm my brush and we only cover the bristles only not nothing else because it will affect the brush what we're going to do we're going to give him a full service today and if you can't see like I say move um, we're going to give him a full service we're going to face do my facial and we're going to do him uh, a full shave as well so as you can see we're just putting this positioning it so it's nice just there, it's on, it's on a rotating head, so you can actually position it. Is that okay, Joy? Yeah, cool. And what we're doing is we're actually positioning it right next to, onto the chin. This is the area that you'll struggle with most: top lip and chin area. This is always the course; it's the hardest to get off. So we get it onto the chin, and it actually splits that way. Then it actually does both sides. But before we do that, what we're going to do is do him uh, exfoliate and a cleanse. Putting the product on the back of the hand. This is uh, our face wash and daily cleanse. It's got rice particles in, so it's an exfoliation as well. And if when you, I'll pass this round, you can have a feel of it. You can actually feel the rice particles in there. Chamomile, so it's really good for the skin. Do you want to show that round? Just wipe the top. It's just top it. So you can see how much how much product is. 
Ryan, if you want the towel, just pass the towel around with it. So. All we're going to do is touch the top of the head, round onto the facial areas. And what we're after is, when we're doing this, and we take the rest, put it onto the, onto the, palm, the palms of the fingers, hands of the fingers, and what we're going to do is a nice circular motion. What kind of technique is this? What massage technique is this from your Cosmo School days? Effleurage. Perfect, sir. Give that man a carrot. <laughs> so when we're working with this, and we're using it as a mask, if you like, we'd only exfoliate on the top half of the skin, top half of the face, when we're using this product, because when we do this, if we're going to shave the client after, we wouldn't exfoliate prior to, would we? Because it'd make him sore. We'd exfoliate in between shaves, but we wouldn't exfoliate prior to a shave, because you're almost taking the top layer of skin off, aren't we? We're taking dead skin cells off there. So you can see, it's almost setting like a mask. If we take some water now, and very lightly, just a couple of drops of water, you see how it emulsifies, it's turned into a, a the rice particles are, are diluted, and it's turned into a, a normal, everyday face wash now. So then we're just gonna add this on, we're going to just take this all through the skin. You can feel the rice particles doing their way, but it also emulsifies eventually as well. And we're still building the skin condition up all the way through the system. So we, what we're trying to do is, we're trying to build this as a regime for your clients, aren't we? So they build this all into their daily routine. Use a warm towel. Make sure you fan it first, really hot. So check it on the inside of your, uh, inside of your uh, arm there, just on your wrist because you've got gloves on. And then we take it off again, an effleurage motion. Effleurage to put on and then petrissage. Nice kneading motion. We always take it up and away. We're using a circular motion. We don't want to take it down because what happens when we go down we're trying to tone the skin at the same time, aren't we? And what, so can you see how it's, how it's, you can see the product there, natural face wash. So we take that, we want it completely out of the hairline and through there. So it's nice and fresh, exfoliated the top half of the face, into the bin. <laughs> Remember our tools are all ready now. We're going to put, our shaving cream, not double dipping, we're not going in straight into the, into the product, this is a professional service. If this was a tone, we could use the brush straight into the actual pot, couldn't we? You get a lid as well, so we've got a lid to actually sit, close the product up. This is your bowl, your built-in bowl. So we take the product out, we use a spatula about a peanut size, So we're not there. And that will do two shaves. Just that size of product, this will do our whole service. So you're not going in and taking loads of product. And when we use this, you can see it, it's almost melting already because the bowl's hot. So we go back in our water bath so it keeps the product hot. Towels. Why do we use hot towels? Why do we use a, a mister? What's the reason for it? Relax the skin, yeah? What else? Opens the pores. Opens the pores. That's, that's true, it does happen. But is opening the pores critical to a shave? Softens the beard hair, perfect. What else does it do? Activates the sebaceous glands. Yeah, so it's increasing the condition of the skin, isn't it? When we, when we say about opening the pores, what, what comes out of your pores? What's connected to your pore? Sorry? Yeah. Hair. Oil. Oil, no. That's sebaceous gland. That goes onto the hair shaft in the follicle, doesn't it? Sweat gland, can you remember that? Okay. So when we secrete urea, don't we? Sweat gland. So when we're shaving, although it'll clear the pores, 
It isn't critical to doing a shave, is it? The main thing is, it's relaxing the muscles, softening the beard hair, and it's increasing the blood supply, isn't it? So when we increase the blood supply, what does that do for the skin? It improves the condition, doesn't it? We're bringing oxygenated blood to the surface, feeding the skin, and then it's taking all the rubbish away, all the oxidants to your lymph glands, isn't it? Yeah? So all just by doing this, we're improving the skin condition. Just by massaging the face, putting a hot towel on, preparing, it's all helping to prepare the face. So our pre-shave, we're going to use oil. So this is the uh, shave oil. It's got hemp seed oil in and it's got uh, black currant seed oil. When we're working with this, a couple of drops you can see, and we're actually going to work this right into the beard. When we're putting product on there, oil, cream, butter, when we're getting it onto the face, what, what are we actually putting it on for? What's the reason for it? What, why would we put, why, why, why wouldn't we use anything? Make it glide easier. And Perfect. The Perfect, sir. It's just a medium for our razor to glide, isn't it? So when we actually use the, these products, whether it be shave, cream, butter, when we work with this, we've got to make sure, especially if he's got any sort of growth on there, that we need to get it onto the face, not just coating the beard. So when we're working with these uh, oils, creams, we're making sure that we're massaging it right down onto the face, okay? Again, we're still using the mister to keep the condition there. One more hot towel. Again, checking the temperature all the time. You can see how hot they are, you can see the steam coming off them. Fold them in half, check the inside, offer it to the client, is that okay sir? Yeah, bring it up, just fold it on, and that way it stays on, we don't have to hold it on, does it? Perfect hot envelope, if you like, around the face, okay? So it's all about timing now, it's all about we're doing it in a regime, aren't we? We're building up this, this routine all the way through. And that's why everything has to be in, on hand and in place while we do the service, okay? You saw me put a razor in, the, in a blade in the razor before. Different types of razors, different types of blades. Um, we've got all the, when we're using the feather system as well, we um, use the Pro Guard in certain states. This is a guarded razor, and I'll show you the difference in a minute. So I'm using my favourite razor with the Pro Guard. And this, I don't know if you can see this, but can you see there's like bars over the actual blade? And that's classed as a guarding razor. Okay? If you want to look at it closer, in a minute we will do. But I would always do this in front of the client while the clients we do the consultation. They can see you putting a new blade in, in front of them straight away all the time. Okay? So that's our blade prepared. Now, while the, the, the heat of the towel is doing its work, we're going to load our brush. Now, it's really important about how the consistency of the cream is. So we, we go straight down and load the center of the brush. Then we agitate side to side. We don't do it round and round as if we're make, mixing a cake. What we're doing is it's side to side and we're agitating the cream. Now, everybody always says, well, when do you know when it's right? And I just keep, I always say, when your arm starts aching, that's when it's right. So. But can you see the difference? Look at the, look at the consistency of the cream now. And look how much cream we've got just from that one blob, that one peanut size of product. Okay, so it's really important that it doesn't fall off the brush, but it, it isn't too sloppy and it isn't too thick. The main thing is, is to get that consistency to, so it actually works onto the face. You won't have to add any more product, you just use that one product to do the whole service. So when we work in the product in, we load the brush, and then we start to work it into the face. We use a circular motion, 
all around the area. This is the area that you will always suffer with. This is where he'll get irritated if he does, or this is the area that you'll struggle to get off. So we always, always work it into this area the most. And I don't want to, you know, when, if you do ever decide, we do classes, so our education, we've got this young man here, this is Mr. Eric Lander, he's our, one of our lead educators as well, I work with him all the time in the UK and abroad and globally. When you take any of our classes with any of the educators, you will see and, and get first-hand experience on how to do it. But we, we want to be organised. There isn't cream all over the place. It's not on the floor, it's not all over your towels. It's about working smarter, not, not, not harder. So when we're working this product in, I don't want it to see it all over the place. Fan your brush, so your thumb goes into your brush, gives us a nice arc. So then, take the nose, we can work it straight into the lip area, the top lip. I see some people, they'll take the cream off with the finger and then put it on. What we need, as long as you can control your brush and you've got good method, you can do everything with your brush. And obviously when you're working with clients, you've got to try and educate them to doing this at home as well, aren't we? If we can sell them a brush product, we've got a number of, of creams and um, we've got the, the butter, which is great for home use if you're not going to use a, um, a brush, go straight into your hand. But this is, the difference with this is we don't get a good lather like this, it's a butter, so it's very low lathering. It's actually more of a cream. Okay. You can set that yeah, up. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the butter works very well in place of gels and foams. And if you only need a very small amount, it moves very well, not a lot of water. It's got cactus and plant extract. Oh, um, sorry. Shea butter. Yeah, Shea butter. butter. Shea butter, yeah. And something British. Is there a British ingredient in there? Or English peppermint. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> So when we're using the razor, we're doing a 14 point shave. Do we all do it that way? Do you do, have you all been taught that way? 14 point, yeah. So when we take it, traditionally you always do a shave from one side. Now I'm not going to tell you that's the only way. It's because when years ago when we were all in a line and the shave monkey, the, the uh, lather monkey used to do all the lather and then the barber actually came around and if you were all in a line, we all stood on one side so you didn't bump into each other when you were shaving. Okay? If you don't stay from one side, that's fine. You can do it all from the back. If you go to Trumpers and do their shave training, they do everything from the back. So, you know, I'm not going to say this is the only way, but this is the way I do it. Okay? So when we're working 33 degree angle, and when we're working with the client, it's nice, even strokes. When we, when we actually go through, we use paper product, we don't use the towel that's protecting the clients, we use a product like that, straight in, and then we fold it up so we don't. If you're a bit portly like yourself, or something's you know, a bit of an odd shape, if you always lean into it, you'll get covered in cream. We don't want that. So we always fold it up every time, okay? So when we're working, we're working forehand stroke, nice, even strokes, we take that off, we always take it from and towards, like that. Never through the fingers, obvious reasons, but I see it done so many times. Backhand stroke, so we always, always move the client where you need to go. When we do the backhand stroke like this, why would we do this? Why would we do a backhand stroke in that stroke? Um, we always go with the hair growth, but if I went in like that, what would be happening? I'd be hitting his nose, wouldn't I? So we're always about the client comfort, taking the tash off at the same time. Can you try him so we can see? Well, I will. I'm going to do that side as well. If you want to come around here and watch, it's it's not like a haircut. It's one of those things that we can only do from certain yeah. angles. But when we're actually working, if we pick, if you pinch the nose. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit awkward when we're doing this um, from a, a stage point of view because 
when you're doing it on stage, you're higher up and he's flatter, isn't he? So it isn't like doing a hair front almost. So when we turn. And this is why I say about taking the nose area off first, you know, the, the top lip, because it's usually coarser, isn't it? And remember the use of the blade. You know, when I said it, because it's flat at the end and the blade goes right to the end of the actual razor, we can get into all these intricate places here like this. So when we come through here, take the top lip, just move the client very slightly. Take the top lip again, get in there nice and smooth. Okay. I have a question for you. Yeah. So when we, when we do the nostril here, we're pinching. We're pinching the nose to give us that tension on the top lip. We can't pull this top lip like this, can we? Because of the natural wear the position. So what we're doing is, we're pulling the top lip and it's giving us the tension all the time. So when we're turning, we come back down. And we're going with the natural what? All the time. Natural growth pattern, okay? We gain a with the growth pattern, not against. And when we've got guys like Dwayne, when, you, when they're quite chiseled features, remember, we're trying to flatten every area we can out. We can't shave round corners, we can't shave into, air, into corners. So what we're trying to do is manipulate the skin all the time to get it as flat as possible, okay? So when we take it this side, Backhand stroke, we nibble across where we're going to go with our razor for our sideburn. Okay, again. And obviously, we wouldn't be talking through the client here either all the time. We'd be, we'd be quite nice and quiet, wouldn't we? Yeah. So what we're after is when we when we're folding this up, we can only shave from no hair into hair. So that's the reason we do this, this side, top lip, and then this side, and then we come across the chin. Because if we didn't, what would happen? What would, what would happen if we tried to get in there without having a, no hair? It would get stuck. It would get stuck. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't glide, would it? Um, I, it's just so natural for me now to have gloves on that I don't even think about it anymore, you know? So when we're working and you, you're keeping the tension of the skin, and people say to me, oh yeah, but you can't feel, you know, what you're doing and where you're going, and I just don't get that problem at all now. Uh, I just, um, it's something that even does, doesn't even enter my head. When, we, when we're working with gloves, um, and I'm going to show you with, in a minute with... You alright there, Dwayne? Oh, yeah, sorry, it's all. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, mate. So, backhand stroke. And what you've got to remember, when you do keep the hair on the face, I mean, you can shave a gentleman as, as, with as much hair on as, uh, you know, when you've got a really large beard. As long as you can cope with the, the amount of debris, you can shave even that length of beard up. Yeah? Uh, it might be more tricky though, but the California State Department, or the California, whatever your uh, licensing uh, organization is, allows you to use a guarded razor on the face, allows cosmetologists to use a guarded razor on the face. You can. So you don't necessarily need to go back to barber school to provide this service. Yeah, well, this is why the feather system is such a good system because. We've, 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 we've trained and held classes all over, the, all over North America now, and this is the one thing, and I'm glad you brought that up, sir. What's your name, sorry? I'm sorry. Zach. Can you repeat that louder? So what Zach's just said is, in the state of California, because I'm using a guarded razor, this is the feather system, this is the pro guard, on a play of words, a guarded razor can be used by on state law. Now, in certain states they can, certain states they can't, 
but this is what we found we can where, how we can get around the cosmo you know cosmetologist and the barber situation can still get a great finish and I mean I, I know I'm talking uh, here when I shouldn't be but um, we st can still get and that's why I've used a guarded razor today um, just just for this shave to show you you can still get a great finish with this this particular system and when we're working with the client they won't know any different that they're using a, you're using a guarded razor it's only you who knows really so if we just put that in there I'm just going to start a new towel now. I'm going to take some product off. But what the, the main thing is, and sometimes, do you do a sh two shaves every single shave? Who does a lot of shaving? Who said they did a lot of shaving? So do you do a sh two, sh two shaves every time? No. no. Correct. So sometimes, you can, if you've got a guy who hasn't got a, a really heavy growth pattern, or he's got some, somebody's got uh, an area of, of what they're doing, uh, they don't have to have it uh, two passes. You can just re actually just revisit if you like. But I'm going to do another pass because we know we've been talking. Um, and then what we're going to do is, is just show you the sponge shave as well. So we're just going to use a little bit more oil. The oil is great because it's got prickly pear seed oil and it's one of the most expensive oils on the market. But the, the shave oil is great because it does three jobs. So we can use it as a hydrating oil for the skin. We can use it as a standalone shaving product. So it's a shave oil. And also it's a beard oil as well. Because let's face it, there's so many products out there and it, they're all made out of the same things ingredients wise. Ours are a little more high end. But the, the beard oil and the, and the shaving oil, they're very, very similar products, okay? So we use it as a dual product. So when we actually work with this, it's great. Uh, the shaving oil is really good for, if you've got um, intricate beard shapes or somebody who's, we're gonna do a, a line up in a minute with one of the guys. Yes, sir? Gary, what's your opinion on using that guarded blade as opposed to using a, a, a double guarded blade? Does it actually make No, I treat it exactly the same as a, a normal blade. I mean, we do, with the um, different types, and you can come up here and have a look at them, but the, the main blade I use all the time is the professional blade. This is an unguarded, if you like, and I use that all the time. When you use the guarded razor, you give it as much, um, when I say it's guarded, you will still cut somebody if you, if you, don't, if you abuse it. When you rub it on the back of your, of your thumb, you can actually feel, you know, um, the wires that actually protect the blade. So officially, it will not cut you. So it's, it's wires the same that are on the feather nape razor, correct? It's yeah, not, very, not very similar. Type razor, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A lot less than that. But you still have to give it that, you know, <coughs> respect. You can't go and, you know, rubbing it across somebody's <laughs> neck and not expect to cut them, you know. It gives you, gives us a, another idea of, of, of how we can get around the state law, but also it is great for students, it is for, for guys who are starting off. And, and Zach, you were saying that that's illegal in California? Correct. So, yeah. So remember, we've had no more product, this is the same product, one peanut size product for two shaves. Okay, so we're actually putting that on and look at what the kind of cream we've got. It's still as good as when we started the first shave. I have a question. Uh, is there any time that you would prefer to use the SS razor as opposed to the DX razor? Right, so the good point sir, that's very good of you to bring that up. You know the razor then I guess, with you bringing that up, yeah? When you came, when you when you come up, and it's something I probably didn't touch on when we started, the difference in the two razors and I can't show you at this moment in time because obviously we're halfway through a shave. But when, at the end, I will start, just bring that up again and we'll show you the exact differences and why they are. <coughs> so, if we're going to go against the, the grain, we don't tend to go against, we always go across. Because in growing hairs, razor bump, irritation, and with Dwayne as well, 
if we get another tissue. With Dwayne as well, he hasn't got a great amount of length. His density isn't, isn't enormous, but he's still got the same growth pattern. So what we have to do, we still have to treat every shade the same, even, even if they are, the density is different. If he's got five hairs on his chin or 500, we still have to go through the same regime, don't we? Yeah? Probably we don't have to work as hard, but we still have to do that, that regime. So remember, when we go over the Adam's apple, we never go over the apple. We always pull the skin off to the side, shave, let it go back, pull it off to the other side, shave, okay? That way, you won't cut him. And remember, it's every client's different. When you get to the stage where you can shave every single client that walks through that door, that's when you know you can shave because there's always, always going to be something that surprises you. There'll always be a, a situation that arises, and unless you've been in the job a long, long, long time, there's not many days that go by that something doesn't surprise you on a certain client, whether it be, you know, a limiting factor or growth pattern or something like that. It, it always amazes me how many times, you know, you see new things. So I'm not going to do a, go over the top lip again because that's pretty well covered. I will just go and retouch the very edge of his lip there. And the only reason being there is because I can see one hair from there. So that's good. If you, get, if you feel like that this is getting in the way and you can't see where you're going, just move it out of the way. You know, you can actually move it and have a look. Gary, I have a question regarding the steamer as well. Um, Mister, it's not a steamer. Mister, we actually purchased a, a, a steamer, which looks slightly different than that, maybe, but similar. Um, and several of our people wore glasses for the mission. Oh, right, myself okay. included. So I had trouble getting it figured out use the steamer while shaving. So I would steam the face for a minute, pull it back, get in there and shave, and then... And yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, so it, unfortunately, it's, well, or fortunately in my case, it's something that doesn't affect me at the moment. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure in the, in the future, it could be, a, it's a good point. And then the, the main thing is, when we're working with, with uh, a mister or a steamer, whichever one you're going for, the main thing is, is work, get your own routine going. Um, I always keep it on the left hand side, some people like it on the right, you know, it's whatever suits you for how you work. Um, it isn't something that I've come across, to be honest, it's, uh, it's something that, I, you know, that's never come onto the radar for me, really, um, when, we, when we've actually worked and nobody's Nobody's actually uh, bought it up before, so that's a good point. What's your name, sir? Ron. Ron. That's a good point, Ron, because it's, it's something that we, we haven't come across. So it's a good we, point. We sell it as a premium service now, so it's a $10 add-on if you want to have this big facial shave. Yeah, yeah. And that's the same with us. This is the signature shave for the BBA. Um, when you, obviously, you can do the, the signature shave without a mister. It doesn't have to, but this is an add-on for us, like yourself. Within the, within the group of arm shots, we do an express shave and a you know and a BBA signature shave. Uh, but and sometimes you won't you won't actually do the facial on every client either, will you? You know sometimes the facial is an add-on uh, with the BBA shave, the signature shave. We do that as that's included in the shave. But you know not every client wants a, a facial either. So you know that is a good point. So we can push that out of the way. When we're working with the sponge, I really like the sponge for cleaning up with. I don't know if anybody uses a sponge. This is just a natural beauty sponge. Um, when you're working, it gives you your tension. When, you, when, you, when you're actually working um, on the face, if you say, sometimes somebody said tension isn't great, you know, if it, if, is it better with gloves? This is your best tool for tensioning. And when you pin, can you see when you pull the skin, it actually gives you natural tension straight away. It's really, really great for that. And also, when we're working with, uh, with shaving, it gives you, gives you more tension, but also, you can actually feel it because it actually grabs the hair. And when I say grab, you can actually feel 
if you've got any areas that, you, that you've missed, you can actually feel where they are. And it's a really great tool for that. For the upper lip, for this part, I wouldn't ever use a sponge for that. I'd always pinch the nose. So it's always, always going to be pinching the nose there, coming down there, coming down there, and then coming across there. So your top lip is always done by tension by pinching the nose. If you, if you get little bits in the corner of the mouth, you can pinch, and it just makes the hairs rise. If you use your sponge, when you drag your sponge, it can actually go against the grain and it actually lifts the hair so you can actually get it as well. It's a really, really, it's the best kept secret. There is sponge shaving in, in, the, in our syllabus in, when we actually shave. And the, when sponge shaving officially was, when it was, when it was used years ago in, a, in, our, uh, in the classroom and, and in the shaving in the barber shop, it was, you know, the guys who've got like a 12 o'clock shadow and they, they almost got a greeny blue tinge, haven't they, when they've shaved. When you want that little extra bit off to give them that few hours extra uh, before they need to shave. Some guys can shave twice a day, can't they? Using a sponge shave and following the sponge. Look, look what's taken off. Okay. So when you, it's really, really deceptive. If you use it, now not every skin, and I'm using this on, loosely on, uh, on Dwayne because we're in a teaching situation, we want, we've got a class. If, if Dwayne came in for a shave in the barbershop, I probably wouldn't sponge shave him because he isn't dense enough. You know, the growth doesn't need to. His skin's great, he's, you know, he's young skin. He's a fit guy, not, not carrying any weight. So he's, he's got great skin and elasticity. I mean, some of your older clients, you know, you, you go to tension here and you end up here, don't you? you know? <laughs> You're a bit of a fat lad like me and, you know, and you've lost some weight or whatever. He does move a lot, around a lot. But when you've got guys like this, he makes life so much easier, doesn't he? Because the skin's very firm, it's healthy, you know, he's quite chiseled. So it's, you, you have got to be careful where you shave. But it is, and we don't want any, 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 Redness, so we don't want any irritation, do we? That's the main thing. Is your sponge damp or dry? It's, it goes into my hot water. If it's dry, it would it, it just drag across the skin. So I use it, I soak it in my hot water, so as hot as you can stand it, and then I, I squeeze it out, and then it's, so it's hot and damp as well. Okay. Any questions about what we've done up to yet? Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of sponge is that you said? Beauty sponge? It, it's, it's just a normal uh, beauty sponge. It's a face, face cleansing sponge. You know when um, you ladies do um, your regime, your, your cleansing regime? It's exactly the same as that. They're just beauty sponges. You can get them usually dehydrated. They come in packs. You can get them in packs of 10 or... You can, you can um, um, you reuse them if you sterilize them. Um, you can't use barbicide because that's a good point. When you, what, what do you use to sterilize your brushes and, and your soft materials? Disinfectant solution. Okay, so usually we use milk and glue, which is clear. It's sterilizing baby's bottles, stuff like that. Okay. If you use the um, barbicide, what's going to happen to your tools? Turn blue. They stain everything. So your brushes, your sponges, they all come out blue. So you need to use a clear solution when, you, when you're uh, sanitizing. So, there's, there's our shave done. I've got a cold towel. We usually have a cold towel in the fridge, in the refrigerator. I put, it, I put them in um, plastic bags so they're all separate. This would be freezing cold now, usually. But, obviously, it's, it's just cold water in it at the moment. So, when you do this, exactly the same application, but you, you actually let the client know because this is your cartoon moment when you scrape him off the ceiling, okay? So this is going to be cool, right? okay? Usually this would be really cold though, this would be out of the refrigerator. And so, if you've got any, what, what's the main benefits of this, would you think? Close the cuticle. Close the cuticle. Well, cuticle is in your hair, isn't it? So you're thinking of pores. It does close the pores, but remember, we're not critical about opening and closing the pores. So what else would it be doing? 
tone the muscles, so it's retracting, isn't it? It's taking any redness out of the skin, so what's it reducing? Irritation. Irritation. But what's the, what levels is it reducing? Blood. Blood. Okay, perfect. So it's reducing the blood flow to the surface, so the redness goes. You know when you get spotty? Have you ever seen it when you've shaved and you get blood spots? Now what blood spots is, so imagine when you... There's your, heart, there's your hair follicle, there's your hair shaft, okay? When your razor comes across and cuts it cleanly off, it's a perfect cut. When you get blood spotting, what happens is your razor comes across. Now this could be the razor is blunt, you need a new blade in, which is very rare because I never ever change my feather razor out because they're that good. It's usually bad method or bad poor technique or wrong angle. But what happens is instead of cutting it off cleanly, it grabs hold of the hair, the, the, the razor does, and plucks the hair instead of cutting it. So if you imagine when you go back into the, into the skin, what's in the bottom, what's the hair attached to? The ball. Sorry? The hair ball. Hair ball, yes, yeah, so that's the base, that's your hair root, the hair ball. What's that attached to? Your rectal pili, that's right, yeah, so for standing it up, it's also connected to your sebaceous gland. But what's at the very bottom? The root? The, the skin? The root? What feeds it? The blood vessels. Blood supply. Yeah. Your capillaries, aren't they? Yeah. So as soon as that hair bulb gets ripped out, plucked, what happens? It ruptures and fills, the, your, the, fills your follicle with blood, doesn't it? So you get a perfect round circle because it's just filled the hole. Yes, sir? Question back to the, the guarded razor. Actually, can we teach a slicing method as well as a pull down method? Right. You know, angling at a 20 degree angle for the razor. Can you still slice with a guarded razor? Do you use that technique? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, advise any slicing. Kind of. I will. You, you can show me the technique at the end, uh, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't do any slicing. Very simple. If you picture a loaf of bread and you were to cut it with a knife. Yeah. And you come straight down on it, it pinches and goes in like that. Yeah. So you slice through it, it makes a cleaner thing. And we believe that coming through the shaft of hair, if you're slicing through it rather than just going through it, it makes for a better shape. And it's easier to get it through. And you can tell when somebody has a little dense period that cuts way better. All right, okay. So teach that method. Yeah. To I, it, it's very hard to teach a student that because it's a very fine line when you just cutting and slicing, you can cut them very you easily. Do that with a I yeah, will. Done it. Yeah, yeah, I haven't done it with that. So we've toned the, the skin, reduced the blood capillary, so the redness is gone, so we take that off. So now we're going back to our heal and protect part of this. So on the top half of the face, we use a face moisturizer, just again, about peanut size on the back. And what we've got to do is, is just the top half of the face. And this one is just here. <coughs> this is your everyday moisturizer. So this has got Irish moss in. It's got a really distinctive smell. It's supposed to be uh, smell like the forest. It's supposed to be the, uh, the smell of it. So when we work that in, nice and smooth, and what we're going to do, we're just going to blot the excess product. So we don't get, because what happens if you're not careful, it will be very, very greasy, or it will be very, very uh, shiny, and you don't want to, and plus it could lead to million. You know, when you get buildup of mineral oil in your face, when you get your white spots around your eyes. This is a piece of resistance to our system. Brian, if you could just pass it. This, as you can see, is very distinctive. It's got dragon's blood in it. It's Sandre de Grego. It's a plant extract. It's not the kind of dragon's blood of King Game of Thrones. So it's not, it's not coming all the way from there. But what we've got is it helps to formulate collagen and it's the heal and protect part of the shave. And what we're doing is very gently, we're rubbing this into the shaved area. So the red is on the bottom half of the face, white is on the top. And what we're doing is just very nicely, just rubbing this in and 
Remember, this is your finishing product, so it's always after your cold towel. Because if you think about your regime, ladies, about when you cleanse, tone, and moisturize, you always cleanse, which is our cleanse, and then shave, tone, and then moisturize. Okay? Again, a lot of excess product. And you've got to make sure that this product is really, really well massaged in. Because can you see how it's tainted the towel very slightly? If a guy's wearing a, a, a light colored shirt, you've got to make sure it's really, really well. You see? How come you use one product at the top and one at the bottom? Because this is a balm, this is for shaving, this is heal and protect. That's an everyday moisturizer. You can use the everyday moisturizer for everything between shaves, but when you're actually shaving, this is a shaving balm. So when we, it's a post-shave balm. So when you see it, it's got a really great texture and you can actually feel the healing properties and it makes a completely difference. So we finished the, the, uh, the service. We're just gonna bring this client up, All right, sir. Can you just take the strain off your chair? That's it. Perfect. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> like a new man, sir. You're great. So, what you've got to remember is, if this was going to be a service, um, we're just going to have a haircut later anyway. But if, we, if this was a service where we'd always do what first? Would we do the haircut first or the shade first? Yeah. Always the haircut first. Because if we change anything about the hairlines or his, his shape of his, of his sideburns, we'd have to go in and revisit it if we did the shave first, wouldn't we? I would always give him a complimentary neck shave as well at the same time, because I've got the blade in, in my razor, I've got my gloves on, so it's, I'd, I'd shave him as well at the back, okay? Perfect, thank you very much, sir. If you can just stay with us, we're just going to do a beard trim now. Just we've got last five minutes. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you much, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing. This is what you've got to remember. Brad, can you come up, mate? What we've got just ten minutes left. We're just going to do just some facial hair. What you've got to remember is, at the same time, although guys shave all their life, they're supposed to be great at it. They're so rubbish at it, honestly. We're, we are so bad and we're so idle with, when it comes to uh, using great products, as in shampoo, conditioner, styling products, shave products, skin tight products. <coughs> what do they do? They use and use whatever's in the bathroom, don't they? They're so, you know, we're so rubbish at that, guys are. And you've got to teach them almost or educate them on the, what their shaving routine should be, you know? so. Quickly, we're just going to uh, give him a, a quick clean up, and I'm just going to show you as well what, how we can line out. Just, I'll answer the, the who, who bought up the razor question. So, what's your name, sir? Andre. Andre. So, Andre bought up the razor question. So, when, we, when we're working with the razor, the difference with he, he bought up was the razor that I've just used and this razor, if I just take my blade out of it, Quickly, and I do this with my gloves on because usually my apprentice would do this and put it in. I've got my sharps box with the, where the sharps would go. If you look at the difference, and it's all about the profile and the shape of the razor. So can you see the difference in the actual body of the razor? Can you see how it, how it's actually the different shape? And that one's quite flat. You see how it's got a ridge. So this is, this is your professional razor, this is, this is for guys who have done quite a lot of razor, razor work, home razor shaving. This one is more your everyday one, but also for guys who are, or are starting to shave. Because what it does is, if you look at the profile of, of the razor as well, can you see? You see how it's got a lip on the, on, the, on the top of that razor? You see how it's got a lip on the top of the razor? Different profile in this shape. See how, how, the, how flat it almost gives, it almost looks like a very traditional hologram razor, doesn't it? That's what we expect a razor to look like. The shape of this razor is, as you can see, it's got a little lump or a little bump on the, on the edge of the razor. So when we're actually using this razor, 
So when you push, what it does is, when you get the correct angle, it almost, can you see how it pushes my skin? Before it raises the skin, and it's almost pushing the hair into the razor, isn't it? You know what I mean? Whereas this razor, you've got to get the angle yourself. Okay, it hasn't got that, that little lump on the end, that lump there, that bump, because what happens with that is, it just makes the hair rise very slightly, and it's a little bit easier to use. So this is a great training razor, or a great everyday razor. You just need a little more practice if you're going to use that razor. Okay. What's the price uh, point on those are, are different? Um, that one at the show right now is two fifty, and that one is like eighty nine. So that's the difference in price as well. Okay. They use all the same razors though, all the same blades. Yeah. Push it down. When when you pass a razor, even if we know it's it's safe, we always pass it like that. Okay. So, hopefully that's uh, cleaned up that, but when you can get them in, in exactly the same two models as well as that one, that's, that's the baby to that if you like, that's the equivalent to that in the, in the straight one. You can get it in that one as well. You okay? can or can that? Can. Okay. Yeah. So, quickly, five minutes, thank you. So when, we, when we're actually doing facial hair, and Brad hasn't got a lot on here that we, this is, if I, if I just tell you, we're doing a presentation in the inspiration stage upstairs by the ballroom at 12.30. We're doing four models up there. Um, we've got a beard trim there, a really good beard trim that we're going to do on stage there. When we're actually cleaning up, what's the main thing when we're doing facial hair? What we've got to, what we've got to, the main thing that, that we've got to keep in mind? Contour of the face. Okay, so shape of the face. But it's, it's how it fits with the client, isn't it, as well, as much as anything. So it's managing the client's expectations. If somebody wants, you know, a, a chin strap or a very, very fine beard trip, and they haven't got the hair to do it with, they're not being, you're not being, get what they want, are they? If somebody wants, you know, a beard like Seb here, you know, a full beard with grown really long, some people can't achieve that, can they? So what you've got to do is manage your client sometimes. But it's all about balance and symmetry, isn't it? Most guys, and you know, myself included, but I'm not that fussy anyway, but most guys, they like the beard more than the hair. And if you muck it up, or if, you, if, you, if it looks rubbish at the end of it, they're gonna notice because they're in the mirror, aren't they? If you, if you give them a little ball patch here, you know, it's gonna take somebody else to show them or tell them, isn't it? Whereas you do, if, you, if you muck your beard up, he's gonna know. So, they're very, very protective of beards. What I would say is, I see so many people reclining people to do beard trims. Always keep them in the same position as they were, a natural position. You're going to have to move. I know it's a bit awkward, and I do, I do get the client to move the head sometimes just to get in there when I'm cleaning up. But when we're actually putting the initial shape in, we always keep it in a natural position. Because what happens when we move the head around? changes the skin. It can change the whole line out completely, can't it? Okay? So when we're actually working, we always line up first and just clean up. And we're almost sculpting. We're not actually cutting. We don't, we don't take it through our fingers. We don't take sections almost, do we? We're almost sculpting the beard. I work in over, even when I do haircuts, I work in overlapping panels. Because I very, very rarely, I did on uh, Seb this morning, but I very, very rarely use guards. And especially if you're going to do beards like Zach's, you know, Seb, you can't, can you? You can't use a guard on those guys because they're too long. So you've got to put your guidelines in. So what we're doing is using scissor over comb, clipper over comb, shear over comb, sorry, clipper over comb. And what we're doing is we're starting with overlapping panels. Now with Brad, we could probably use a, a uh, a guard, couldn't we? But when you go in, oh, and Brad's let me into a secret today, he, he cut his own hair last time, so uh, he's not good for the trade, is he? <laughs> but when you, when you do your beard, what do you usually do? do you, what do you usually ask for? Do you put, use a guard or? I do it myself. You do it yourself, I yeah. knew you were going to say that. Yeah. But most people now are conditioned to asking the haircuts by numbers, aren't they? We, when I first come into the trade, we didn't have guards because it was a home haircut kind of situation. 
So when we use scissor over comb, shear over comb and clipper over comb, we work in overlapping panels. So it's going to be what you've just cut, which is there's my guide, and then what you're going to cut. So you're always working from your guide round the face or round the haircut. So when I'm working like this, I'm working over comb and in overlapping panels all the time. And I'm using a white comb so you can actually see. But when you're cleaning up, and if you want to just tip his head, you can do it just to get in there. And then when you actually come to put his line in, you keep him nice and natural. And he's done a really good job, actually. He's, uh, do you spend a lot of time on your beard, bro? No, God helps me. If I mess <laughs> it up, I just shave it into a stash. <laughs> <clears throat> how, many, how many clients have you had? They've been growing a beard for forever and they decide to trim it up because they couldn't get in. And they muck it up and they have to take the whole thing. I said, where's your beard gone, George? Oh, try to trim it myself. You know, so if you've got a guy who, who comes in and, and wants a beard trim, they're going to be really great clients for business because they are always building. They probably have two beard trims to, to one haircut. So we have guys in who come in weekly or even every few days. So we're, what we're doing is, we're almost sculpting the beard, and then we're lining it out. And remember, it's really important to gain what the client wants before you start. Because if you go into beard shapes, there's so many beard shapes, but we do a lot of work in the Middle East, and they have beard envy out there. They love their beards. They, they don't care about the hair at all but they like it very angular, so they have a point, they have a, a corner put in here, and they have it coming round, and it's a really sharp corner, and then bringing, if you take that off, that's like, you know, you just killed one of his children, you know? Sorry? No, I said it's like murder. Yeah, it's, 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 like, you, it's like you've killed one of his children, honestly, it's, it's terrible. But, when we're working with this, and especially different shapes, it's all about what we can achieve, isn't it? So when we put that down... And I would always rough my, my beard shape in and then I'd use my trimmer. Is that what you all do? Yeah? Because most beard shapes are too hard or too coarse just to go straight in with your trimmer, aren't they? And we don't tend, we're not taking a great deal off with, uh, with Brad. But when we do the, t the tash as well, always keeping the tash secured underneath your comb. So if you do take too much off, you're not going to take the whole thing off, okay? Then we onto the pink of the lip. But we're trying to be as soft as possible because if you push onto the pink, what happens? Cuts them, doesn't it, usually, okay? So we're just nice and smooth, just onto the edge and then we flick that out. And then we just take the very edge on the front, just to get that, those out the, out the corner of the mouth, and stop him so it isn't irritating when he touches it with his tongue. So if we use our trimmers, if we're gonna put a shape in, always, always come to the line. We never drag down, do we? We don't come down and go down like that, do we? Okay? For one, it will irritate it, and for two, you don't know what you're cutting off if you've, if you've got a really thick beard or, or neckline shape. Because if you drag it down, what are the chances you might actually snag one of his paws, won't you? And it'll, it'll snag, cut him. So we always clean up to the line, we never drag down. Tensioning the skin at the same time so it doesn't move. Nice and steady over his Adam's apple. What's your favourite What's mine, sorry? What's your favourite and This is great. Wall detailer, fantastic clipper. Changed my life, really. <coughs> because when this came out a number of years ago, this almost takes it as close as a razor now, doesn't it? If you zero gap them, you have to be careful, but it almost takes them down to nothing. And when you're doing work like this, if we put a, if we put a shape in, and take that off like that, it will, I mean I would always clean this up with a, a, a razor after, 
but it will almost change his sideburn shape or his uh, beard shape. If he's going back to work and he isn't going home to have a shave, you can actually get it to the point of cleaning him up and not change. We, we've almost stopped neck shaving now because of, of trimmers. We get we find a lot of our guys because everything's an extra. We we try and build everything into. It. We only give certain things on our basic service. So a neck shaver's extra, clean up, beard trim. These are all bill builders, aren't they? They build your bill. We've been very bad in the past, gents wise uh, and barbers, for underselling ourselves, haven't we? If you go into a ladies' hair uh, salon, everything's extra. Isn't it? Your conditioning treatment, your cut, your blow dry, your colour. Well, we should be the same, you know. Even though we're not using product as much, uh, as in colour, you know, we use sun colour, cray coverage, stuff like that. But when we're working with these guys, everything that needs to be built onto the bill. So you, ported or ported? Like, I use both. So I've got, I've got, I've got the trimmer there, and I've got also when I do stage work and I haven't got any power outlets, that's the equivalent cordless. So that's that's the detail of cordless. Not quite as strong as recorded. I'd always use recorded before this. But I still like it. It's a really great clipper. Also a wall. Yeah, both wall. And then for my general clippers, I use two. I will use the Cordless Senior. So that's a really great clipper. Lasts all day. It's got the, uh, the more uh, aggressive blade on. So it's a flatter blade, the surgical blade for fading. And then I've got my general clipper, which is a wall uh, super taper, and that's got your, your general blade on. And I zero gap those, and then just get these so they're just below, so they're great for fading and on children and all the clients, because they don't cut them, they know they won't nick. But with this one, this is my go-to everyday kind of clipper. We use these corded as well at work. We've got hundreds of pairs of these. We just because we, we actually produce for the clients, uh, uh, guys, tools at work, other than scissors. So, any questions on, on the beard? Or on the shave? No? Yeah? Yeah, just very slightly. Can you see how we've gone in very slight? Because when he comes down, what he, what he likes to do is... If you, you almost, when you're looking at a beard of this length, you almost want it like an infinity pool. You know, where you drop, the edge drops off and you don't actually see where it finishes. So when you're looking at this guy, when you're looking at Brad, just bend your head down very slightly. Can you see when you look at him straight on, it doesn't, it's normal, because he's high up anyway, but if we were at this level, I'd want it so his beard looks as if he just fades into his neck and you don't, have, you don't see a line, if you know what I mean? Because he's got a great looking guy and you know he's got great bone structure, it really suits him that same shape anyway. If we were doing a big beard like Zach's, then we'd determine how we where we were going to finish. Because some guys, when they wear the beards really thick, you'd have to lift it up and clean underneath. Some guys like it natural so they don't have to clean up so there's no maintenance whatsoever. Because what you've got to remember is when you do these guys with beards. If you're putting a line in, an unnatural hairline in, and this in, it's going to take a lot more maintenance, isn't it, than somebody who's keeping it naturally. So, I don't know about you, Jack, what's yours? So, he cleans out as well. But as soon as he puts, starts shaving this away, he's got to keep doing that, hasn't he? Because it looks unkept. As soon as he gets any growth, it, it'll show that he's unkept, won't it? And same with Brad, you know, he needs... And he, he, you know, you can tell he, he looks after himself and he, he trims his beard on a regular basis, even though he doesn't go to the barber, he, he does it himself. He's no good at trade. Um, so, you know, you've got to make your clients aware of how much maintenance is going to be needed, how often they've got to come in, how much product to use, when to use it. Okay? Thank you very much for your time.